Hi, I'm Sam Benevento. I've been practicing bankruptcy law for many years. I appreciate you taking some time to look at this video. If you're considering filing bankruptcy, I hope you choose my firm to help you. Please call the number on the screen to set up an appointment with me. I'll be happy to sit down with you for a free consultation to discuss your bankruptcy options. If you're unsure about filing, please listen as we explain the basics of bankruptcy. The first bankruptcy laws were enacted over 500 years ago. Hello, I'm Martin Probilski. Obviously, bankruptcy laws were designed to give people in financial trouble a measure of relief from overwhelming debt. In bankruptcy, we refer to people who owe money as debtors. Most debtors find themselves in financial trouble due to circumstances beyond their control. When a debtor is unable to pay the bills, creditors, that is the people you owe money to, use legal process to get paid. This legal process can include foreclosures, repossessions, wage garnishments, and seizure of bank accounts or other assets, to say nothing about the seemingly endless amount of telephone calls to you, your family, and even your employer. Bankruptcy is designed to stop these collection activities, get you a fresh start, and on the road to rebuilding your credit and your life. Once your bankruptcy is filed, your creditors are notified of the filing, and most of these collection activities including those harassing phone calls, must end. Over one million bankruptcy cases are typically filed each year in the United States alone. Filing bankruptcy involves completing some complex legal forms and transmitting those forms to the bankruptcy court. The forms are tricky. You should have a qualified legal professional assist you with them. If you are married and decide to file bankruptcy, you have the option of filing separately or jointly with your spouse. Filing without your spouse, however, raises a number of serious issues that you absolutely must discuss with an attorney. In bankruptcy, timing is everything. You should not rush into filing, but rather consult with a competent attorney to determine when is the best time for you to file. Most bankruptcy horror stories involve cases that were filed prematurely. To file, you will be required to list all of your debts, your assets, your income and expenses, and a history of your past financial dealings going back about two years. Each of these bits of information provided can have a substantial effect on your case. Prior to filing your paperwork with the court, each debtor must complete and pay for a credit counseling class. In addition, after filing the bankruptcy, each debtor must take a second debtor education class. The classes are relatively short and are available online or over the phone. Our office will assist you in obtaining the required certificates of completion for each of these classes. Once your paperwork and the counseling certificates are filed with the court with the required filing fee, a number is assigned to your case, a judge is appointed to your case, and a trustee is also appointed. The trustee is the person assigned to oversee your case through the court system. The trustee's main job is to look out for the interests of your creditors. In this respect, the trustee is your adversary. In all types of bankruptcies, the debtor is required to attend one hearing called the meeting of creditors. The hearing is conducted by your trustee and your creditors are invited to attend. As your attorney, I or an associate of mine will be with you at your hearing. Remember, at this hearing, the trustee's job is to try to find assets to seize or a way to obtain money from you to pay your debts back. To try to avoid this result, it is very important to have a qualified attorney with you at the hearing. Prior to the hearing, your attorney will provide the trustee with the required documents, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements, and other documents. Usually, the meeting of creditors will be the only court appearance that you will make. The goal of bankruptcy is to obtain a discharge of your debts. Discharge means that you are no longer obligated to pay your debts. It is against the law for a creditor to ever attempt to collect on your discharged debt. Things like child support, alimony, intentional injuries, fraud, and criminal fines, including traffic citations, are not dischargeable under bankruptcy laws. Student loans are non-dischargeable except for a rare debtor that qualifies for a hardship discharge. The rules on taxes are also very complicated, but contrary to popular belief, some taxes are dischargeable. Generally speaking, however, most people in financial troubles will be able to discharge all or a significant portion of their honest debts through the bankruptcy process. 
There are essentially four types or chapters of domestic bankruptcy. Chapters 7, 11, 12, and 13. The vast majority of individuals will file either a Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Chapter 7 is the most common type of bankruptcy. It's known as a straight bankruptcy, a fresh start, or a liquidation. To begin to understand Chapter 7, it is important to understand the law on exemptions. Basically, when you file a Chapter 7, the Chapter 7 trustee becomes the owner of your property. Each state, however, has a list of property you can exempt from this result, hence the term exemptions. Some examples of exemptions are your home, your vehicle, your clothing and household goods, pensions, retirement accounts, and tools of the trade. However, there are limitations on the use of exemptions. The point is, if at the time you file Chapter 7, you own non-exempt property, the trustee will be free to sell this property and use the money to pay your creditors. This is why it is extremely important to get qualified legal advice before filing bankruptcy. Aside from the exemption issue, the threshold question in determining whether or not you qualify for Chapter 7 is, what is your current monthly income, or CMI? CMI is determined by looking at your actual income from all sources except Social Security for the six months preceding the month that the bankruptcy is filed. If your CMI is over the median state income for your family size, you may not be eligible to file Chapter 7. However, this is not the end of the inquiry. You should consult with a competent attorney to see if you are eligible because a good lawyer may be able to squeeze you into a Chapter 7 based on other factors. If you do not qualify for Chapter 7, you may qualify instead for Chapter 13 reorganization. In a reorganization, a debtor repays some or sometimes all of his or her creditors. The amount of your repayment depends upon an analysis of your assets, your income, your family size, your debt level, and whether there are any debts that you are required by law to pay back. However, even in the less common case of a debtor having to repay all debt, the outrageous interest rates charged by many creditors can be completely eliminated. Much of the same paperwork is filed in a Chapter 13 as in a Chapter 7, with the addition of a plan of reorganization. If a Chapter 13 is right for you, our law firm will work with you to design the plan, come up with the monthly payment, and will give you detailed instructions on making your payment. You may also be able to use Chapter 13 to get rid of a second mortgage or home equity loan. This highly favorable mortgage workout is only available under Chapter 13 law. You may also use Chapter 13 to repay certain back taxes, again without penalties or interest, to restructure car loans, and to obtain a moratorium on paying student loans. In our state, a mortgage company does not have to go to court to start a foreclosure. A foreclosure is started by the filing of a Notice of Default, or NOD, with the county recorder. The process is technical and beyond the scope of this video, but it is important to know that your home can be sold at auction a little less than four months after the NOD is recorded, mailed, and published. After auction, you can be forcibly removed from the home through the eviction process. There are only five ways to stop a foreclosure. You can pay the mortgage according to the terms. You can negotiate a workout or loan modification with the mortgage company. You can sell the home. You can file a lawsuit to try to block the foreclosure, or you can file a bankruptcy. The bankruptcy option allows you to either to try to save the home, buy more time in the home, or escape post-foreclosure liability on the mortgage, depending on your circumstances. Some people may not be able to save their home despite their best efforts. And some people intentionally want to give up their home because there is no equity in it and they can't afford the payments. Once a home is lost to foreclosure, a mortgage company may be able to pursue a claim for a deficiency, assuming that there is one. A deficiency is measured by subtracting the value of the home from the amount owed to the mortgage companies. If you are potentially liable for the deficiency after a foreclosure, you should consider filing bankruptcy to eliminate this debt. It is very important that you speak with a bankruptcy attorney before the home is sold at auction because you typically have more options if you are still in possession of the home at the time you file your bankruptcy. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope it was informative. If you have additional questions or concerns, call my office to schedule your free consultation. 
I look forward to helping you with your bankruptcy needs. Thank you.